the weather winter so far has brought the kind of storms that interrupt and even endanger lives. With days of rain and flooding in the southwest, record snowfall in the north, and conditions harsh enough overseas to shut major transportation hubs. This after a summer of even more dangerous waves of heat and water. Tonight, Dan Harris talks with a forecaster who saw it all coming and who has less than promising news for what's coming next. Hard not to be impressed when you see entire houses being swept away by floodwaters in the west. Part of the same storm that tonight is creating road closures, evacuations, and widespread fear of mudslides. Meanwhile, tonight the madness continues over in Europe, where the snow and freezing temperatures that paralyze major cities is only now starting to relent. There is one person who is happy about all of this, though. I'm extremely pleased that this is very cold, and uh, it's very cold in Europe as well. This rather odd-looking man is Piers Corbyn, who actually predicted this nasty weather, which the British government failed to do. We predicted that this winter in Britain and Europe would be the coldest for 100 years. Corbyn's methods are, to say the least, unorthodox. He forecasts based on the magnetic connection between the sun and the earth. Although many people say his correct forecasts are just a fluke, he remains supremely confident and now says the weather will only get worse and very soon. In the coming period between Christmas and the New Year, as I said, we're expecting blizzards in uh, Europe and eastern parts of England. We're expecting blizzards in the northeast USA. Maybe Corbyn's right, maybe he's not. Either way, we are certainly coming to the end of a year of crazy, and often lethal weather, most notably that unprecedented heat wave over in Russia and that huge and lethal episode of flooding in Pakistan. And of course, every time we have a year like this, people always ask the same question. This has been a, by any stretch, pretty crazy year in terms of weather. Is there anything in what you've seen this year that makes you think that we're seeing climate change at work? You can never attribute the cause of individual weather events to a long-term trend like the global warming trend brought about by the buildup of the greenhouse gases. What you can say is that certain types of weather are made more likely by the buildup of the greenhouse gases. That would that's be, Princeton that's scientist Michael Oppenheimer who happened. says climate change is like loading the dice or tilting a pinball machine, making it more likely that we'll have heat waves, intense rainstorms, and higher sea levels. It's not a pretty picture. Over the long term, it's not. And if we don't act to stem the emissions of the gases, eventually it gets disastrous because Earth simply just keeps warming. It might feel cold outside of your house tonight, but 2010 may well turn out to be the hottest year on record. And in fact, the last decade was definitely the hottest on record. Despite all that compelling evidence, climate scientists say they now feel more embattled than ever. And some of their biggest opponents, they say, are politicians on the right. In one congressional hearing, John Shimkus from Illinois quoted the Bible, arguing Summer God promised winter, the earth would stay safe for mankind. Cease. I believe that's the infallible word of God, and that's the way it's going to be for his creation. And here's Every what our incoming exhale. speaker, so John Boehner, told George change? Stephanopoulos. George, the idea that carbon dioxide uh, is, is a carcinogen that is harmful to our environment, it, it's almost comical. What is your reaction? Well, first of all, no one's asserting that carbon dioxide is a carcinogen. The assertion is, and it should be classified as an air pollutant, that a warmer world is not a good world for people. This is nonsense. It's politically motivated and, and is completely detached from the scientific reality. Meanwhile, the FBI tells us it has seen a spike in threatening emails to climate scientists. And a white supremacist website recently ran pictures of scientists with the word Jew next to them. Michael Oppenheimer says he's sure this interview will result in angry emails. I recently, just last week, spoke at a meeting and I read out some of my emails and people in the audience were astonished. Some people have gotten death threats. I haven't. What types of things have people called you? I'd rather, you can't uh, use the more amusing ones on uh, family television, even in this late hour. Now climate scientists, including Professor Oppenheimer, are fighting back, forming rapid response teams to counter what they describe as a vast disinformation campaign.
There's no question that going back almost 20 years that certain segments of industry got together and started funding disinformation campaigns just like the tobacco industry did with smoking in order to create doubt in the public public's mind that the science was firm enough on global warming to, to actually act on it. But this is a device we've seen before. And it that, worked for a little while. And it did work. It delayed action. We see the same thing here. Their foe, they say, is a well-funded campaign to confuse, led by people like Dr. Fred Singer, a controversial scientific skeptic with whom I conducted this combative interview several years ago, which was heavily criticized by many in the skeptics community. There are so many scientists who disagree with what you're saying. The IPCC, NASA, NOAA, the National Academy of Sciences, American Association for the Advancement of Science, the American Geophysical Union, the American Meteorological Society. We're talking about scientists what can all I over say? the globe. What can I say? They're wrong. We should say that Piers Corbin, that guy who claimed to have predicted Europe's current weather woes, he too is a climate skeptic. I know there are certain people in the global warming cult, and that's what it is, it's a religious cult. They believe that everything that happens is caused by global warming. Look, this is sheer madness. Corbin is now predicting a mini ice age in the coming years. However, the vast, vast majority of climate scientists disagree and say if you like this year's extreme and extremely deadly weather, you'll likely get much more if the world doesn't act very quickly. For Nightline, this is Dan Harris in New York.